Hi, welcome to my GCSE Maths video. We're looking at factorising into double brackets. So, before we do that, I want to show you what happens when we go from double brackets into something else. Now, if you've seen my other video on the banana method, the banana method is what I use to do what we call expanding brackets. Okay, and what that means is we draw a banana onto our brackets and then for each line of our banana we have to multiply. So the first line is x times x, we get x squared. The next line, x times 2, we get 2x and it's a plus because it's a plus times a plus. The next line is 3x because it's 3 times x and the final line is 6 because it's plus 3 times plus 2. Then we collect these terms in the middle. 2x add 3x is 5x. Now that is very important that we're adding these together. Okay? And the rest of our terms stay the same. So we've got x squared plus 5x, which remember was 2 add 3, plus 6, which remember was 2 times 3. So hopefully you can spot that this is 2 add 3, this is 2 times 3. Now what we've just done here with the banana method is called expanding. Okay, So we've expanded. If we want to go backwards, which is the subject of this video, we are going to factorise. So to get out of the brackets, we expand them. To get back into brackets, we factorise. And it's all to do with this pattern that the middle number in front of the x is gotten by adding the two numbers. And the number on the end is gotten by multiplying the two numbers from this part of our banana. So I'm going to make up a question. And we're going to try and go backwards and put it back into double brackets. So, question x squared plus 6x plus 8 and that's it and we want to factorize that means put into brackets so we know it's going to be two brackets because it's a quadratic with one two three terms and one term with x and one term as just a constant so straight away we put our two brackets xx and you should be thinking ahead, well, I've already got my x squared by doing x times x. So it's a good start. Now we need to think about what these two numbers are going to be. Remember the trick that we looked at in the previous slide. 2 times 3 is on the end, 2 add 3 is in the middle, when our numbers were 3 and 2. So this time, our numbers have to multiply to 8, and add up to 6. So all we've got to do is find two numbers that multiply to make 8 and add to make 6 and we can put them in those green boxes. A good tip when you're first starting on these is to think what multiplies to make 8? Start with 1. 1 and 8, 2 and 4, 3 and nothing, so we've got all the possibilities. Now you think, which ones add up to 6? Not 1 and 8, 2 and 4. So you've got your numbers, 2 and 4, and it's plus 2 and plus 4. So we've got our answer. Let's check it works. x times x, x squared. x times 4, 4x, and it's a plus. 2 times x, 2x. And 2 times 4, 8. We then put it together, and as if by magic, we get x squared plus 6x plus 8, which is what we had, so we know we've got it right. There's our answer in two brackets. Going to give you another one. We're going to start with x squared plus 9x plus 20. 
So, we're looking for numbers that multiply to make 20, add to make 9. Write out numbers that multiply to make 20. 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 3, no, 4, yeah, 4 and 5. And once we get back to 5, we've done all the investigating we need to do. They're our choices. So, which choices add up to 9? Not these, not these, yeah, 4 and 5. So we set up our brackets, x, x, and our answer is plus 5 and plus 4. It does not matter which way around. doesn't matter, okay? You still get the marks. So that's factorised. If you want at home, expand that out. You'll see you get back to this. Now, how can we make this a bit more tricky? Well, we can have negatives here. So I'm going to make up a new question. x squared plus 3x minus 10. So we have to multiply to make a minus number. And we have to add to make a positive number, 3. Same rules apply. Look for numbers that multiply to make just 10. 1 and 10, 2 and 5, and that's it. Now, instead of thinking what adds together to make 3, because obviously none of them do, you want to look for putting a plus and a minus in front of these numbers to make what you want. So we've got a plus and a minus to use. So, how about 1 take away 10? No? Well, how about minus 1 add 10, a.k.a. 10 minus 1? No, that gives us none. How about 2 minus 5? No, that doesn't work. How about a plus 5 and a minus 2? Yeah, 5 take away 2 equals 3. So we've got it. So we write our brackets out. X, X. And the numbers that go in are minus 2 and plus 5. Okay, I'll do another one with negatives. If we start off with x squared minus 5x plus, no, minus 14. So, we want two numbers that multiply to make 14. And we remember about the minus, what we have to do there. And they have to add up or take away to make minus 5. So, we think of our factors of 14. We've got 1 and 14, or we've got 2 and 7. There's no more than that. Another way to think of these is which ones have a difference... that it's 2 and 7. And here's a trick. If you want to get negative, then the bigger one must be negative. If you want to be positive, then you want the bigger one to be positive. So, we've got our numbers 2 and 7. Positive. So, we want our bigger one to be negative. And that's right. If you're good at your calculations, 2 takes 7 gives you the minus 5. So, it's x plus 2, x minus 7 doesn't matter which way around, and if you expand that out, you'll see you get this. Jumping briefly back to the last one, can you see we realised it was going to be 2 and 5? Well, the bigger one was plus, so the bigger one is plus out of our numbers, okay? So, next one. x squared, take away 12 x plus 32. Now, we've got to multiply to make 32. 
we've got to add or take away to get to minus 12. So we carry on as normal. We're going to be eventually putting in into two brackets. We think of our factors of 32, and there's quite a lot of them. One and four and eight. Five doesn't work. Six doesn't work. And so you're done. Okay. So there are our choices. We need to think which ones are going to get to 12, or in this case, minus 12. Now, if you imagine you've got two numbers and they multiply to make a positive, we all know plus times a plus gives us a plus. That's your normal times tables. Hopefully you also know a minus times a minus is a plus. So that means, actually, if there's a negative going on somewhere, it's not going to be pluses because then you can't get down to a minus number. So they're both going to be negatives. Let's test that out. Minus 4 times minus 8. Well, 4 times 8 is 32. So minus 4 times minus 8 minus times a minus is also 32. So that works. What about minus 4 plus minus 8? Well, when you add on a negative, is just the same as taking it away. Minus 4, take away 8. On your number line, you're on minus 4. You take off 8, you go back all the way to minus 12. So it works. So our numbers that go in are minus 4 and minus 8. So we've covered plus and a plus. We've covered plus and a minus, or minus and a plus, doesn't matter which way around. we just covered a minus and a minus. There's one more thing that I want to show you. So if we go back to each of these questions, instead of saying factorize, it might say to solve the equation. So we've already put it in brackets, and we are going to need that. But the question instead might say solve. If it says to solve it, it will give you some extra information. It will give you that this equation is equal to zero. Now, if that is equal to zero, when you've got it in your brackets as well, like we have down here in the middle, because they're the same thing, just different ways to write it, the two brackets are also equal to zero when multiplied together. Now, I'm going to show you the longer way, and then I'll just explain how the, it's a trick for it. Okay? Remember, in between two brackets, there's a multiply. That's why we did the banana method. Now, that means that something here multiplied by something here gives you zero. Well, how can we multiply two things and get zero? Two things multiplied to get zero. I hope you know that zero times anything is zero. So that means that what you can do is know that this bracket could equal zero. And then it doesn't matter what this is. When it multiplies by zero, you're going to get zero. So, let's check out our second bracket. The second bracket has x plus 4 inside. So, let's say that's equal to 0, so that when we multiply, we get the answer of 0. Well, x plus 4 equals 0. Take 4 from both sides, and you get the answer, x equals minus 4. That's one possible answer. The other option is that this first thing equals 0. Then that can be anything, and we still get zero. So let's think about if the first bracket was equal to zero. x add 2 equal to zero to solve this equation. Take away 2 from both sides. x equals minus 2. So actually, there's two answers that we've got. 
x equals minus 2 or x equals minus 4. If you're good at substitution, try one of these values, put it in as x in this equation, and you will get 0, believe me. Next one. Let's pretend it was a solve. Let's pretend it was equal to 0. I told you I would show you a quick way. I've told you why it happens. Now I'm going to show it to you. What's the opposite of plus 4? Minus 4. So you just write x equals minus 4. What's the opposite of plus 5? Minus 5. There are your two answers. And that's when it's a solve question. Once you know how to do the bracket bit, if you're good at remembering tricks, these next marks are very simple. You've done the hard work. Next one. Let's say it was a solve. And when it's a solve, it will be equal to something. So hopefully it'll be equal to zero so that our trick works. It has to be equal to zero for us to do this. So let's say, using our trick, opposite of plus two, opposite of minus two, I just said the answer, is plus two. Opposite of plus five is minus five. And it could be either of those. So you've got your two answers. Next one, with a little tip on. Let's say it was a solve fact, and it was equal to zero. Well, we use our trick again. The opposite of plus two is minus two. The opposite of minus seven, seven. Job done. Next one, this is our final one. Okay, I bet you're all solving this in your head quicker than I can rub the rest of this stuff off. So let's say it was a solve. And so if it's a solve, we hope it's equal to zero. I could make a horrible question up next, actually. I think I will. So if it's equal to zero, we can do our trick. x equals 4 or x equals 8. I just want to show you what is quite nasty that can be done sometimes. Let me change the question that we're trying to solve. So let me just change it slightly. I'm just going to change the number 32 to 30. And I'm going to change, instead of being equal to 0, I'm going to make it equal to uh, minus 2. OK? Right. This could be a tricky question that you get given. Do not try to factorize this into double brackets until this is an e equal zero. I've actually set this up quite nicely. So if we recognize this has to be zero, and we do the add two to both sides, what we get is zero here and 32 here. So guess what? We've already solved that question. It's got the same answers. We've covered quite a lot in this video. I hope you've followed it okay.